All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Drew. We are How Was Your Day podcast. Um, we thank you for tuning in today. And uh, today we're bringing you something special, another uh, perspective of how to deal with things that we all deal with, right? So it's the commonality. Um, everybody deals, has stress, stressors in your life. But we want to try to shed some light on how to overcome that and ways to move forward. Um, before I go into all of that, I'd like to introduce the man on my right, or on my left today, always on my left, GQ Nesto. How you doing today? Doing well. Just uh, uh, excited to be here. Obviously, something different and uh, uh, amazing guests, amazing knowledge. I think all around, I think I'm, I'm excited about that. So. All right. And I'm excited too. And I'm excited because we have a special guest today. We have our very own a life coach, she's like super famous, like, I don't know, you know. But no, um, we have someone that we, we sought out and she's here to uh, share her information and I will allow her to introduce herself. Will you please introduce yourself, please? Of course, I would love to. Hello, everyone. My name is Alina and I am a life coach. <laughs> How did you get started? Where, where did this come from? How how, when, how how did you know this 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 was your calling? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> let, let, it's let, pretty good. Let's, let's hear the backstory. Okay. Get ready for the story, right? right. I've, ooh, I never knew that I'm gonna be in this. <laughs> I never imagined my life to take me and get me over here to be a life coach. Um, but certain circumstances, life situations led me to something that I was really, really passionate about. And here I am. <laughs> Did you notice like in, in high school or, or any like formal type of educational setting that like people always like sought you out for advice? Mm -hmm. um, there's a joke among my friends, <coughs> excuse me. It's fine. They would say, hey, talk to Alina, she'll, she'll help you with life. Are you struggling? Call Alina. She'll take care of this. That's and dope. it's always been it's always been a thing. Like Alina, you should look into psychology. What are you doing? <laughs> Go into psychology, take a degree, or become a therapist. I'm thinking, no. <laughs> you, <laughs> I went through a lot of things. <laughs> this is the least person you want to hear from right, <laughs> right. to guide you and teach you in life. But I've been always passionate about helping people. I'm very compassionate to everyone. I see a huge light and positivity in each person. And if I see they're struggling, I want to be there to upgrade, bring them, brighten up their spirits, or kind of help them, guide them to get out of that little yuck. Okay. And to get going. You call it the yuck? <laughs> the yuck. That, that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> the manure. <laughs> so um, was it a, like a, a certification process or how does it work? Like how does one mm. become a life coach? Good question. Oh, uh, what, was, what, was, what was your route? What route did you take? My route, honestly, I think it takes me back into um, – I I actually didn't even go to school for psychology or I didn't become a therapist. I went to school. I came here to America actually as an international student. Where are you from? I'm from Russia. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, dope. Yeah. Okay. I was born in Kazakhstan, which is strange. Many people don't know or associate Kazakhstan with the movie Borat. <laughs> but, um, yep, I moved to the United States as an international student and I uh, went to school. A part of my journey was I wanted something, my parents wanted something great and bright for me as, a, as their kid and I was open to explore a new country and learn a new language, adapt to different setting and I went to school for a long time. I didn't know what I wanted to do so I figured business it is. Mm -hmm. It's easy. <laughs> Right. You can always apply it to any other fields. Right. So I went through the school. It wasn't business, um, like an MBA pro program. It was just an undergrad. And after I worked in the field of business management, I helped a startup company to bring their purposes and 
And there is a point in my life that somehow eventually I navigated myself into a medical industry, the okay. medical field. So um, I worked in medical for over a decade working wow. with lots of patients. I've been a part of the emergency hospitals. I've been a part of the internal medicine, like a primary care doctor that you see. I never did any medical things, so it was mainly patient coordination, business administrative tasks. And I think that's where a lot of my journey came through because I had a, on a daily basis um, interactions with patients that were going through their healing journey, whatever they were struggling with, um, coming see and a doctor. So, so <laughs> we were having a conversation about that, and it was kind of juicy. I, I definitely, I was like, I had to go straight for it. Like, oh I was like, I, I can't wait. I was well, like, fill, let, fill me in. Let, I'm I was curious. like, I was like, let's let's get to the nitty gritty, like you said, right? Okay. And I was telling her, I was like, okay, so obviously. There's there's uh, a, a mental health host, uh, doctor, right? A therapist, right? So, and then there's a life coach, right? Okay. So there's a huge difference. Obviously, the 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 doctor is gonna help you with you know whatever crazy thing you got going on in your head. He's gonna help you that. But then there's the life coach that's gonna get you where you have to be, right? So I, thought, I was like, I was like, okay. From that perspective, it's kind of a, because people get defensive, like, they're like, I don't want to go to no therapist, you know, that, that's not something that I want to do. So now, the life coach part, the whole thing, it, it was just, it, it's a kind of a conflict in that aspect, right? But what I was trying to tell her is, what's your definition of happiness? <laughs> and then I was like, when she told me her response, which I want to let her take the floor on this one, ahead, I, I was kind of, I was kind of sold on that. So. <laughs> okay. So the happiness, um, I mean, obviously working in the medical industry, we had people that were trying to feel better, right? And usually what do you do? You use prescribed medicine to almost patch it up. You see a therapist and to hope, hoping that you'll feel better, right? And still it's not the same. And I... I went through a huge crisis in my life, which was a divorce, <laughs> as personal as it gets. Right. I went through a divorce. Oh, something went off. I can't hear yeah. myself. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> right? I think, I think so. Yeah, we're good. Okay. And um, it was a moment in my time where first I didn't believe in, uh, I didn't know even which way to go, which direction to take, who to find. So I could therapist um, or a psychiatrist and I couldn't really I didn't believe in them either because I felt like if reaching out to them will be I'll be shown my weakness and from my cultural background being a Russian you don't show your weak side you always show the strength and you handle it you work hard and stop whining stop crying get a hold of get a grip in your life and move on and show the beautiful side of yourself. Right. And here I am struggling and I don't even know where to go. So try a psychologist. All of this is happening here all in the States? All happening in the States when I'm in this um, post-divorce situation. And I just realized that I couldn't really navigate. I needed someone that could just talk, to, listen to me or help me slightly navigate me, hear me out. I was so puzzled. I didn't know, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Do I need to take medication to be happy? I fell into this great depression. And I've realized at that time, I couldn't find a person that would see me through where I'm at right now and really help me just steer me to the right path. Um, and the way I... Life coach sounds a little bit too much, right? No, no that, that, that's, that's, that's what you are. That's, well, that's what I am. That's but what you are. Um, I've learned to, before I would think, as a life coach, what, what could I tell you? I went through a lot of different things, a lot of um, maybe unhealthy patterns, but that's the way how I've learned, and that's the way what helped me learn how to be better, how to take an action and take an advantage of my circumstances and make it in a better way and help other people. 
Um, That's dope. It, it, it's kind of like a like a no return, right? Like you you just got to go with it, r regardless of how you feel, how the circumstances are, because. I think that's the, the hardest part to admit is the fact that sometimes we need that little push, right? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily tell me what to do, but push me to get through this whole, what you were saying, stink or, you know, this whole situation that is holding you back from, you know, moving forward. And I mean, that that's pretty awesome, especially like the whole fact that she was like culturally, because that's that's usually what, what really what it all is all about nowadays is that culturally um we're not here to just have a hall pass or say oh okay like do you feel good like no shut up and keep going mm -hmm. right and i think that that's that's powerful just as it is especially the way the the world that we're living into and sometimes it's hard to you know emphasis more on positivity versus the negative things that are surrounding us so uh, i think it's a uh it's amazing in what you do, right? So I, I, I was doing a little background and a little research of about you, right? And I was on your website, and I, I can honestly say, like, I was amazed by some of your quotes on there, right? So I, I don't like to read during our shows, our episodes, but I want to read something that you put on your website, and I would it would be amazing if you please elaborate and okay. just tell us what it means, all okay. right? All right, so when a quote that I saw that you wrote on your website is, when you forget who you think you are supposed to be, you can remember who you truly are. Mm -hmm. That, like, you don't understand. I, like, that really touched me. Mm -hmm. And I think and I know where you were going with that, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll let you take the podium and, and, and please explain. That's my home base, too. <laughs> That's my home base because I've, whether it's a culture or the conditions that I grew up, I've always thought uh, you have to be this, you have to be that. That's there. There's a, some, some sort of a standard form. You follow the path that everyone follows, right? By this age, you're supposed to be this person. How come you don't have that, right? And. Um, it's been always a pressuring point for me. Here I am coming from a very great family and I'm going to America, lots of expectations. Um, going into business, yes, this is the right thing. That's um, you know right. what the standards are putting us. And, and you, you kind of get wound up at living outside of yourself serving or pleasing other people or giving your full energy for something that doesn't even benefit you. You start worrying about what people say, what they think you should do, and everyone has tons and tons of different opinions, right? And with that, what happens? You come to an empty source. You're like, wait, who am I? Who am I? And why? Am I not living? Why am I not happy? I'm doing what people are telling me to do, or um, I think I'm supposed to be that. And we look out for the outskirt, but not looking inwardly. And for me, there's just a point where I had to completely just give in and say, you know what? I don't give a crap how you think. Right now, I'm going to do me. What do I want to do? What makes me happy? Because once you're happy and once you fully separate yourself from all of the expectations that you put on yourself, right. you blossom and you realize, oh. <laughs> it's that, that realization. The realization of feeling where you're at. Dope. Chico Nesto. <laughs> okay, so so I told her I was going to throw a... a a mystery question, right? Because uh, I was like, you know what? Let me let me t let me throw it out there, right? Okay. And I, and, okay. Um, throw it out there. I, w I was I'm trying ready. to I was trying to uh, tell her I was like I, I love spontaneous, and I think that just throwing it out there just makes it a lot more real, right? And my question to you is, obviously, you've gone through all these uh, situations that land you in a position where. Um, at some point, you're you're taking leadership in, in in guiding someone to get to their goal, right? So, if there's anything of you know, obviously the amazing story that we've heard about your your culture and everything how you've navigated through life is uh, one. 
um, I, I threw a combo. One, do you have a life coach? And then two, okay, what is what is something that you've heard so far from the people that you've coached that you're like, that they, they kind of had their aha moment where they're like, oh, you know what? She was right. This is what we need or this is what I need to just kind of put myself in that position where I want to um, get to my goal. Hmm. Lots of curveballs here. Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Look how did, excited did, he yeah, is. I know, like, I did you write? I'm like, did you write that all right now? Like, uh, I was ready. I was, I was like, clarity. number one, number all right. two. Here we go. So number one, you were asking me if I myself have a mentor, right? Right. And I do. I think it's so important because I don't know anything to this day. I don't. I can't claim that I know everything. You know. Right. And um, it's important to have someone always important the way I believe it's always important to surround yourself that will elevate you it's important to have people that are higher in understanding and they're that they can lift you up and lead you into becoming even a better person mentor is important for me because there's so much I can learn read myself and interact with people but also having that that mentor that will guide me I'm a human being too I have my sad days i'll have my hardships and hard times and just having that ac- accountability partner that will always say you've got this keep going you you know it so to answer your question short i have one and i'm so grateful for her don't don't so, don't. so let's get to the second one <laughs> so I'll, I'll be, i'm ready for that one all right go ahead go ahead go okay ahead. so the second question the aha moments where people the common thing that people react to is, um, I think we live in such a busy, busy lifetime right now with all of the distractions of Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, and um, TV, and everyone has their own opinions and portrayals of how your life needs to be, and you get so distracted by doing and um, doing different things. and. What I truly believe is what helped me get through many points or disco- rediscover myself, explore myself, is to sit down and quiet and actually see what I want. Like, who am I? Kind of come into that position of really digging into what makes me happy? What, what brings me happiness and joy on a daily life? So that means like you identify your, your true passion, your skills. Mm -hmm. Right. So what would you say to someone who is are in, I would say, a process in identifying that, you know, because we're all trying to. I can only speak for myself. I feel that just to exist is not enough. Mm -hmm. I feel that we all have a reason and we all have a purpose. And whether it's to touch millions or it's to touch one, I have a purpose. So. What do you suggest for people to do to identify that? Like, I know what my parents want me to do. I know what my friends and my social circle mm-hmm. want me to do. But what do I want to do? What am I good at? So what would you suggest? I have a thing that I make everyone do is to write down 50 things that simply bring you joy. You would think it's just a random exercise, but in that list of 50 things, you write down everything that makes you happy. Whether it's waking up and having a sip of coffee on your balcony or going for a walk with your dog, but focusing on exactly like, aside from everyone, you know, write down exactly 50 things. It just does a transformation, does magic, because you unify with yourself and say, what are, like, yeah, what do I like? Not 50 things, that's kind of hard. 50 things, that's, yeah. that's hard. I'm like, I, I could only think of, like, five or ten. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, 50. Give me th- your three right now. you got to go deep in. So I would say... Ooh, you you now you threw the cr- yeah, curveball. put you on the she spot. Did, she t- okay. okay, so Bam, right back one to is... Mm-hmm. I want to be, um, and, you know, no BS aside, I want to be uh, spiritually fulfilled. That's one. 
Uh, the second one is I want a lot of money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the third one is I want to be able to kind of empathize my journey with other people that have gone through the struggle and, uh, you know, saw that there's going to be a better day tomorrow. Because, mm -hmm. like, today, it might be horrible, but tomorrow might be better. And then, you know, Wednesday, it might suck again. Mm -hmm. Thursday, you know, so I think it's it's not the battle that you got to worry about is, is the whole end result of when you die, I and mean, it's kind of dark, right? But when you die, like, are you going to be remembered for something? Or, or are you just going to live just to please other people or to create an Im image that at some point it's like, come on, dude, like, don't BS. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just want to stay real to myself, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. And to real, stay real to yourself, you also got to do things for yourself. Okay. And I feel like with, with that 50 things of things, I can't tell you enough how many times I get stuck on the 20th or 5th point. Because you get so round up with, I want to, I need to achieve this, this is how you're supposed to do, and you're always on a go, 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 that you completely forget all of the little simple joys. And I get to the 20th point, I'm like sweating. Oh, I, I should know what brings <laughs> me joy, right? Right, right? right, and it's just this transformational point of focusing inward on yourself and showing care and love because with those activities, as simple as this um, writing out 50 things of joy, it will really inspire to say, hey, I actually haven't played tennis in a while. Why don't I do that for myself, right? Or I want to try learn a new language that I haven't done in a while. So I actually, this will bring me joy because I love learning Chinese alphabet, right? right <laughs> it was right. complicated. So those little things is that aha moment of, oh, I had it all in me. I just forgot to pay attention to me and turn inwardly of what I want to do and how I want to make a difference. Do you feel it's important for um, someone to control their own narrative? <laughs> of course. Okay, go ahead. Step, go ahead, hop in on that. Enlighten us, please. Whatever you think is what you create. That th that's I just always stick to that idea. You have the whole power to create your future. You have the power also to rewrite your future. And whatever you think, thoughts have such a powerful, powerful force in your life. Whatever you project in your head will kind of bounce off. And that's exactly what you attract too. Right. So changing that narrative, for example, my divorce, going back into my personal life experience, for a second, I took a path of, this is horrible. I blame everyone for, do, for, for making this happen in my life. And I took a portion of like just being pitiful to myself and mm, hushing myself down, thinking, oh, you know, poor you, Lena. And it's, the world is sucky and just don't trust anyone. Or poor you, you, you deserve to be pitted. Or you have a completely different route of where you can say, okay, this happened. What are the great learning lessons I've learned from this? It happened for a reason. So how can I use my story to uh, bring, empower other people around me? How can my authentic experience be of a help to any other people in the community? So. Th that's true value right there because if, if you think about how we're what the world we're living in right i just think that that's the part where um what you're saying is is, is that this is actually the root of where we're seeing women empowerment we see all these uh women's going through all these different turbulations and all that and then seeing the the bigger picture not necessarily like you're not talking about like let me go get a purse you're talking about let me figure out how I'm going to move forward in life and how I'm going to be able to share that experience, share that journey that that put you, that's going to put you in a better position. And not only that, but it's going to keep you happy. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's it's I want to say it's the little things that count. Right. If, if we can all agree to that. 
And you were sailor. What was your major takeaway from your experience, even though it wasn't like so pleasant? You know what I'm saying? Because nobody wants to go through that, mm-hmm. right? But what was your major? T- how did you say? You know what? Like you said, like this is what I'm dealing with, but this is how I'm gonna move forward. Is that what took you to life coaching? Or is that what just just gave you that empowerment to where you was like, you know what, I, I'm about to run this. Like, <laughs> I, I'm about to do this thing. I think that's a partial thing that took me to life coaching because I wanted to be there for someone who was maybe not going through divorce but going through hiccup or maybe they're not as bold to step up and launch their business. I just wanted to be there. I At that point, I needed a person who could just assure me, you've got this, uplift my heart, or just really listen and with their questions navigate. That's how I do. The way I work with people, I just want to create this environment and the space for them to be vulnerable. It's a judgment-free zone. And to really fully like dive into hey this is happening and there's no problem with that right and with either questions or just my some tips that have worked for me in my in the past or currently work guide them with that and use those tools to take it further further steps so at that time I didn't really have a person that could really see me through or give me that nudge or say you've got it you're wherever you're at is the right place to be at the timing the time is right and kind of assure me that there's still much more than how i can transform and transition and take it to the next level dope 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 look look we got the live coaching stuff so what what do you like to do for fun oh my god tell <laughs> us a little bit about what do you like to do you have to know how to have fun I love to do anything that has to do with music, as we talked before. Right, right, right. Taking myself to... And can, you, can you tell us what your genre of music genre. is? I, I thought it was... I was surprised, but go ahead. I'll let you. I'll let surprised, you. yeah. <laughs> I love techno. Techno sure. is my thing. I like it. Dark beats. I like it. Like house techno, African techno. You tell me. You name it. Um even in the shower, I, I have on the weekend. On the shower, you in got, the shower, you got the I'll have my plan. boom, boom, boom drum. <laughs> that's what makes me happy. That that's what really, really just pumps me up. Um, uh, I love hiking. I love doing a lot, all different sorts of activities. I've never been a runner, so I thought that physical activity you have to do running or pulling weights, which both I can't do. <laughs> But, you know, just exploring nature, going to the beach, walking barefoot on the sand. I'll have my moments when I'll hang out, you know, hang out with like different friends uh, at some sort of event. So really taking myself into nature and music scene. And um, and at times I just love to be at home (laughs) with myself. Cool. (laughs) Yeah. JQ. Honestly, after like speaking to you for this um, this whole time, I, I, I just feel like just the energy, the, the balance that you bring, I could see why you're a life coach. You know what I mean? Like it's like you're non threatening and you're you're very non threatening. <laughs> yeah. Well no, well, you, well, you know what I mean? Like, like, <laughs> a lot of a lot of uh, okay, a coach. I mean I'm kind of I'm kinda I get of, it, I get it. We're I'm good. kind I'm kinda of, like I told her I was like I'm a soccer coach and to me it was like go do some suicides, right? It was like go. What's a suicide? So basically, <laughs> what? Like, break it down, break it down. Break so it basically, down. I would make them go on a hill, right? And then they would go basically go up the hill, down the hill, up the hill. And and my my reward to them was you gotta throw up. If you're if you throw up, you're doing good. You know, you're you're kind of being that mental fitness of going through something that you're like, okay, there's a slight possibility I'm gonna faint. So. Different, obviously, <laughs> way completely different. Because you're like over here soothing. You're over here like, okay, let me let me open up, and then in the other hand, I'm over here like, you know, feel the pain or you're. you're so it's an end point. It's an end point, and it's a beginning. That's the point of the suicide. So you know where you're going, and you know where you have to return. Mm-hmm. So it's the process of 
the pain, the uncomfort that you feel to the point, mm -hmm. but you still got to return. Mm -hmm. And it, it builds, uh, coaches do it like uh, GQ Nesto, you do it for that, that mental toughness. And, you know, a lot of people think sports are a great way to teach children and adolescents about life in itself, right? So mm -hmm. everyone in your team is not going to like you. Mm -hmm. You may not be able to perform physically like someone else, but you still got to make it happen. So if I give you an end result and you still come back, that means that you struggled all the way there, but you still made it back, which is an accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? Which and, I, I think and, it's and that's good. one concept. The concept that, that I he, emphasize a lot people, more. He's trying to get people to throw up. <laughs> no, the <laughs> emphasis that, that, that I do a little bit more is, is that, okay, especially, I mean, I coach soccer. So uh, you're down 2-0, right? 2-0. Um, Halftime goes, and everybody's defeated. Everybody's tired, right? So to me, is is I think a 2-0 is obviously a, a sketchy scoreboard, right? But the whole concept of it is how are you going to keep your confidence and keep your mindset to say, you know what, I can overturn this. I can go 3-2 on the next half. If they score two, why can't I score three on the second half? So I think to me that's the most uh, valuable lesson that I can teach anybody that is in competitiveness or because I just feel that you have to be able to be okay with losing in order to win. Mm -hmm. And, and, and well, it's not really a loss. It's not it's a loss. Insane. It's it's temporary it's, loss. No, 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 no. But I think it's what you like. Like we just discussed in one of our previous episodes. It's you figured out what don't work, what doesn't work. So if I make adjustments and I come back and I attack the same thing, mm -hmm. then there are different many routes. How you can exactly. So do you like? Okay, okay, because we, 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 we got we to gotta wrap this up soon. Mm -hmm. All right, so when is your clock off time? Like, are you out chilling with your homegirls? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all at, I don't know what they have out here because I'm not, I'm not, I haven't been in L.A. even though I grew up he, in he's L.A. He's L.A. native. Yeah. Yeah. He's right. like, he, so, he doesn't know what's going on here. Yes, <laughs> but, but like, you know, you out chilling with, with your homegirls or your homeboys or whatever, and you overhear a conversation. And you hear somebody struggling. You know, it's like the Geico commercials. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where, you, hey, you're off today, okay? You're <laughs> off. And you just, you just jump in. You know what? I, I can assist you with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you, do you set your boundaries when it comes to your, your coaching and, and, your, and your talent and your gift? It's been an interesting journey to even see how this goes because naturally I've always been there to help my friends, support. They would call me, like, Alina, just talk to me. Like, what's happening? And I'm, I think it's just by nature, I, I want to help people, but I don't mind it. It's, there's no time off or clock off for me as far as just thinking and observing, but I always create that space um, for people around me, whether you're my best friend or not. And I'll joke with my best friends, be like, you want Alina coaching or Alina your bestie? <laughs> right. It's almost like allowing that boundary. They know I'm there. They know what I do. But I can't constantly, you know, hang out in a group of friends and say, let me tell you how you, to live your life. Right, or, right. You, they, you're not going to get them calls no more. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're going to see all the pictures and you're going to be like, why, why wasn't I there? You know, like, because you always try to coach us every time you come Right, right. right. I always hold that. I, I respect your space. I respect your space and everyone out around me, whether you're my best friend, a family member, or my client. And... I think it's important because people sometimes, even if you try to push yourself on them, let me tell you how to live your life, they won't hear you. They're not ready to hear. And you have to just allow, it's that feelings like, oh, I really know you're going <laughs> to do it. You are going to be great, but they're not there yet to fully accept it. But I'm just there as a friend, being Dumb. an encouragement. Being, giving them positive feedback or just being me, being their authentic me saying, if you need help, I'm here. Mm -hmm. 
All right. The aura. The aura. That's all. That's the aura. Yeah, the positive aura. That's really. What I, I'm a true believer about that. Like Definitely. people have positive aura, and some people are like have like kind of messed up aura. So I mean, I think that that's really what it all comes down to is like the peaceness around you, right? The You're, tranquility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Dope. awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we come to uh, the conclusion of our show. As always, and I will always do this, um, we always open the floor to our guests and obviously to our hosts. We're going to start it out um, with our guests today. Yeah, All right. Let's do it. If there is anything you would like to share to the listeners and the viewers, um, this is your opportunity, this is your platform. Miss Lena, what would you like to share? Thank you. I just want to say that it's never too late. Um, never too late to make a difference, never too m late to change your narrative, right? Going back into the topic, um, positive affirmations and knowing that whatever happened in life, it can be just a little hiccup, but you have the power, you have the option to make it either sitting on the bleachers and observing this or putting yourself out in the field and being an action player. You'll take a risk, but it's going to bring you so much power and it will open up your potential skills even further. I've been in the dark moments, I've been in light moments, and you will not fully know who you are until you really get yourself going in the action mode. Nice. GQ Nesto. She definitely inspired me on this one, but uh, I want to say it, it's all about going through, not quitting through the whole process. I think that's key. It's just going through it, um, not worrying about how today is, but worry about you know what tomorrow, the the possibility of tomorrow being a better day, and and. Um, letting everything go through i think if you let things unfold sometimes things don't seem to be seem to appear this, the way they look or sometimes the outcome is a lot better than you think so um i truly believe is is just keep going through put your head down tunnel vision and just hope for the best i love you man <laughs> all right i appreciate that all right. <laughs> but no um in closing uh once again, we would like to thank you for tuning in today, uh, tonight, or this evening. Very good morning, right? Um, please uh, hit the subscribe button. I would say this. It's easier to quit, all right, than it is to begin, right? So when we're faced with triumphs, and, and of course, that's a win. But when you're faced with difficulties, you got to overcome that obstacle. And overcoming that obstacle may take a team to do so. But it can be done. It can be completed. But we love you. We thank you. And we see you next time. My name is Drew. We are How Was Your Day Podcast. See you next time. And we out.